Salve Maria! In the first two days of the Triduum in honor of Our Lady of Fatima, we reflected on the significance of prayer and penance, as well as the importance of praying the Rosary. If you haven't watched them yet, I recommend doing so to get the most out of this Triduum. I'll leave the links in the description. Today, on this final day of the Triduum, we're going to delve into one of the secrets that Our Lady revealed to the three visionaries, the vision of hell. Hell isn't something made up by the church to coerce people into obeying the commandments. It is a stark reality. Offending God is of infinite gravity, and those who persistently reject His mercy risk facing the dreadful consequences of this horrible place. But if we're afraid of hell, there is less to worry about. This fear often arises as a result of divine grace, guiding us closer to God and aiding us in avoiding sin. Now, ideally, we should be motivated solely by love for God and sorrow for offending Him. But until we attain that level of holiness, a healthy fear can be greatly beneficial. Therefore, in today's meditation, we'll reflect on hell. Now, obviously, I can't share the same vision that Our Lady showed the shepherds in Fatima. And while we can read their accounts, today we'll delve into something more captivating. The impact that the vision of hell had on the seers, particularly on Jacinta, the youngest of the three. For this, let's watch a short excerpt from a course taught by Father Michael Carlson on the apparitions of Fatima. The full course comprises 14 lessons, but we'll focus on just a small segment of the 13th lesson. Now, it's Lucia herself who gives us the facts of the life of Francisco and Jacinta. She narrates that after they had seen hell, Jacinta, most of all, was very deeply impressed by that vision. It touched her heart to see so many souls falling into hell and so frequently. And Jacinta many times would keep exclaiming, Oh, hell, hell, hell. How sorry I am for those souls who go to hell. Now, once the children, they were playing, and in the middle of their game, Jacinta stopped what she was doing and abruptly asked Lucia, who was nearby her, she asked, but tell me something, is hell really eternal? Does it never end? If hell never ends, do people stay there and burn and never become ashes? No, they never turn to ashes. It's an eternal suffering. So Jacinta was impressed. And Lucia tells us by that vision concerning hell, and from then on, she resolves to undertake many, many sacrifices to prevent souls from falling into hell. She would often repeat, Oh my God, hell, how I pity those souls who go there, those souls who remain there burning like wood in a fire. And she often repeated the prayer that Our Lady had taught them when, she, when Our Lady showed them hell. Oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, deliver us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are in most need of thy mercy. That's the prayer we pray at the end of each decade. She would pray it many, many times. This was her greatest commitment to save souls so that they wouldn't fall into hell, so that people would be converted. We should take advantage and pray for all those who are in the possibility of falling there. Well, everyone's in the possibility if they're alive, but especially those souls that are already on that pathway. On one occasion, before one of the apparitions, Jacinta herself asked Lucia, why doesn't Our Lady show hell to all those people, all those people who, who go to the Covaderia? Because if she showed hell to everybody, everyone would be converted. She was so, so frightened by this vision of hell that she wanted to transmit it to others, that same feeling, that same desire never to offend God so that no one would go to hell. 
What a beautiful thing. There was another occasion when Jacinta also asked Lucia, but why do all these people go to hell? Why do so many souls go to hell? And Lucia replied, because they commit sin. And Jacinta asked, but what sin do these people commit to go to hell? Lucia replied, certainly because they don't go to mass or because they say bad words or swear falsely or because of impurity. And Jacinta was dismayed. My goodness, even for just one word? And Lucia replied, yes, because it's a sin. Jacinta spoke in a very innocent way. She would say, but my goodness, what would it cost them to go to mass or to keep their mouth shut? so as to not say those words that lead so many souls to hell. And it's true, but who can understand sin? Isn't hell terrifying and harrowing? As Father Michael pointed out, who understands the mystery of sin? Why do we prefer a few fleeting moments of pleasure on earth in exchange for an, an entire eternity of misery? But remember, if hell is something terrible for those who reject divine love, even this reality serves as a manifestation of God's love for us. Because thinking of hell helps to steer clear from sin. And meditating on this dreadful place draws us closer to Him. So take heart. Because simply allowing ourselves to be loved by Our Lady, as we explored in the first two days of this Triduum, is sufficient to avoid this dreadful place. Now, there's still lots to learn about the other secrets of Fatima and the other messages and revelations about our days, but unfortunately, our time is up. However, if you're interested in delving deeper into this fascinating topic, I recommend taking the course taught by Father Michael Carlson, available on the Reconquest platform of the Heralds. In addition to this comprehensive course called 1917 Fatima Secrets and Prophecies. This platform also provides other highly significant courses on Our Lady. These include the Consecration to Our Lady, the Mariology course, and many others. Engaging with this array of online formation courses will not only enrich your spiritual understanding, but also fortify your devotion. And that's not all. It also features courses on living a Catholic family life, courses on the Bible, the sacraments, the angels, and much more. This Catholic Formation Platform by the Heralds aims to prevent you and your family from becoming lost in a sea of turbulent information by providing access to the right knowledge that strengthens faith and enriches one's spiritual life from the core. This material is exclusive and specially curated to bring the blessings of the Church into your daily life. Now, to conclude, let's pray together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O most holy Virgin of Fatima, Mother of peace and divine love, we thank you for having accompanied us during this Triduum of spiritual preparation and renewal. Your presence has been a source of inspiration and fortitude in our faith. Today, we lift up our hearts to you, full of gratitude and reverence, recognizing your irreplaceable role as our Heavenly Queen and the Mediatrix of all graces. May your light continue to illuminate our paths, and may your teachings in Fatima be a beacon for our souls. May the Rosary, this chain that links us to heaven, be our constant practice and every Hail Mary bring us one step closer to your Immaculate Heart. May families eliminate discord and pray in unity, for the family that prays together stays together. Grant us the grace to be persistent in faith and charity. We ask that you pour out upon us a spirit of true joy and renewed hope. May all those who took part in this Triduum be blessed and inspired to continue their spiritual journey, taking with them the lessons of Fatima and the certainty of your maternal love. O Mary conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tomorrow, the 
13th of May, join me in consecrating our lives to Our Lady of Fatima. Hope to see you there. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.